Hey there, Iggy here from the Investing Iguana. Today, we're diving into the hot world of Singapore rats. Interest rates are set to fall, and it's shaking things up big time. We're spotlighting four rayites making waves. Keppel DC rayites expanding into Japan. Fraser Centerpoint Trust's suburban mall strategy. Maple Tree Logistics Trust's Southeast Asian play. And Capital Land Integrated Commercial Trust's massive Ion Orchard deal. These rayites aren't just reacting to the market, they're strategically positioning for future growth. From data centers to luxury malls, they're diversifying and expanding their portfolios. But remember, it's not just about chasing yields, it's about understanding their long-term strategies. So, keep your eyes peeled and your research game strong. Ivan and Irene will break it all down for you. Let's dive in and see which rat might be your ticket to financial success. Hey everyone, and welcome back. Today, we're diving headfirst into the world of Singapore REITs. Ooh, exciting. It is, especially right now with interest rates being, well, a bit of a roller coaster lately. We're going to see how REITs are navigating these choppy waters and, you know, maybe spot a good wave or two for those investment opportunities. I like that analogy, riding the waves of the market. Right. So we've got a really interesting mix of stuff to dig into today. A big company announcement, some analysis from a smart investor, and even news all the way from Vietnam and Japan. Ooh, global real estate. Love it. Keeps things interesting, that's for sure. Absolutely. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's set the scene a bit. What's got everyone's attention right now in the REIT world, particularly here in Singapore? Well, the magic word is interest rates. <laughs> Everyone yep. in their broker is watching those like a hawk. The anticipation is palpable, you know? Yeah, because the general feeling is they're heading down. Exactly. And for REITs, that's kind of a big deal. Think about it. REITs, they're all about property, right? Buying it, owning it, managing it. Makes sense. But to do that, they often need, well, pretty hefty loans, just like you or I might take out for a house. Right. Now, when interest rates are high, those loans get really pricey eating into their profits. Ouch. So lower rates would be... Music to their ears. It's like a green light to start making some strategic moves. Because their borrowing costs go down, making acquisitions more appealing. Precisely. Lower rates make snapping up new properties way more financially attractive. And what does that mean? Bigger portfolios, potentially higher returns for investors. Yeah. It's a domino effect. And those returns, that's what we often hear is DPU, right? Yeah, got it. Distribution per unit. It's the bread and butter for REIT investors, that steady income stream. And right now, with those rates expected to drop, everyone's got their eyes peeled for who's making the first move. Speaking of big moves, did you see the news about Capital Land Integrated Commercial Trust? CICT. Oh, you mean their little S1.85 billion dollar shopping spree? Hard to miss that headline. Right. They're buying a 50% stake in Ion Orchard, which for anyone who hasn't had the pleasure of visiting, is kind of a big deal. It's not just another mall. It's the mall. Prime real estate, right in the heart of Singapore's shopping paradise. So what's the strategy here? Are CICT just feeling extravagant? Not a chance. This is strategic through and through. Remember all that talk about economic uncertainty? This is CICT saying, we see you, but we're not phased. Bold move. Bold, but calculated. Ion Orchard. Luxury brands, tons of tourists. Even if the economy hits a few bumps, those sectors tend to be a bit more resilient. So this is a long game for them. Exactly. CICT is thinking long term, securing a prime asset that will keep those dividends flowing. They're financing it through something called equity fundraising, right? Right. Essentially, they're offering more shares to investors, bringing in fresh capital to cover this massive purchase. It's like a giant group project, everyone chipping in. And CICT hasn't actually made a big purchase like this since 2022, have they? Nope. They've been pretty quiet on that front. Makes you think they've been waiting for the right moment or the right interest rate. So they saw this coming, knew this might be their chance. Maybe, maybe not. But it's certainly interesting timing, wouldn't you say? Especially because CICT was featured in that Smart Investor article we mentioned. The one about the four REITs to watch? That's the one. They were on that list, primed to make the most of these falling rates. Looks like they're living up to the hype then. It's like they've been holding back, waiting for the stars to align. That article, the one from the Smart Investor, it actually highlighted a few other REITs too, right? 
ones that are also in a good spot to take advantage of these rate changes. Yeah, three others to be precise. I think you'll find their strategies quite interesting. Each one's targeting a different slice of the market. Shows how much opportunity there is in Singaporean real estate right now, even with all the uncertainty in the air. And that's why we love these deep dives. Uncovering the hidden gems, making sense of the chaos. So hit us with it. Who's first on our REIT watch list? Let's start with Keppel DC REIT. They're a bit different from your average mall operator. Data centers, right. That whole world still feels a bit like science fiction to me. It's definitely the future. And it's growing at warp speed. Think about it. Cloud computing, AI, all that data's got to live somewhere. Keppel DC REIT is wisely positioning themselves right in the heart of that boom. And they're not limiting themselves to Singapore either. I read something about them making a move in Japan recently. Oh yeah, big time. They just acquired a data center in Japan. It's a smart move, expanded into a new market with huge potential. Japan's got the tech, the infrastructure, the demand. It's a no-brainer for a company like Keppel DC REIT. Global ambitions, but with a very calculated approach. Okay, so from the digital world to something a little closer to home, what about Frazier's Centerpoint Trust? They're sticking with retail, but I think there's more to the story, right? You're right. SCT is all about those suburban malls. Mm. Might seem a bit old school in the age of online shopping, but they're onto something. Because people still need a place to buy groceries, grab a bite to eat. Exactly. They're focusing on those essential everyday needs. They're not trying to be flashy or chase the latest trends. So more about being the reliable, convenient option. You got it. Community focused, you could say. And their recent move. Topping up their stake in NX Mall. If you're familiar with Singapore, you know NX is a suburban mall that's always buzzing. Always. It tells you they know what they're doing, that's for sure. Okay, last but not least, we've got Maple Tree Logistics Trust. A whole different ballgame from data centers and shopping malls. This is where things get interesting. MLT is all about that portfolio rejuvenation. It's not just about buying. They're selling, too, and doing it strategically. Out with the old, in with the new. Kind of. They're getting rid of older properties, freeing up capital to invest in newer, more modern logistics and warehousing facilities. They're thinking ahead, anticipating the future needs of the logistics industry. For example, just recently, they picked up properties in Vietnam and Malaysia. Those economies are on fire, right? Lots of growth potential. Exactly. E-commerce is exploding over there. The middle class is booming. It's a smart play to get in on the ground floor. MLT is essentially betting on the continued rise of Southeast Asia. And their logistics network is how they're making that bet a reality. It's like they're playing chess while everyone else is playing checkers, anticipating I, those next few moves. That's a great way to put it. And that's what's so fascinating about this whole interest rate situation. It's not just about reacting. It's about REITs using this as an opportunity to get ahead of the curve, make those strategic decisions that set them up for success down the line. Okay, so big picture, looking at all this activity, what's your takeaway? What's the vibe in the Singapore REIT market right now? You know, I'd say there's a cautious optimism in the air. There's this buzz, this excitement about rates potentially dropping, but nobody's getting carried away. Right, because it's not quite as simple as rates go down, profits go up, is it? Exactly. There are so many other factors at play. The global economy, property values, even things like consumer behavior. Those rates might be a catalyst, but it's the REITs themselves, their strategies, their decision making that will determine who comes out on top. So for someone like me who's maybe thinking about dipping their toes into REIT investing, what's the key takeaway here? What's the one thing to remember? Don't just chase the yield, chase the strategy. Look beyond the numbers, understand the why behind the what. Why are they buying what they're buying? What's the long game? That's where you'll find the real insights. Do your homework, understand the game plan, love it. Absolutely. And speaking of looking beyond our borders, remember how Keppel DC REIT made that move into Japan? Right, with the data center acquisition. It makes you wonder, could this be the start of something bigger? Will we see more Singaporean REITs looking for opportunities overseas, it's definitely something to keep an eye on. Now, that's a thought-provoking question to wrap things up. Always love a little food for thought. And there you have it, folks. Another deep dive in the books. Remember, knowledge is power, especially when it comes to investing. So keep asking those questions, keep learning, and as always, happy investing.